Good evening, and welcome to the Season 67 Closing Night Performance, Masterworks 6, Carmen in Concert. My name is Cameron. I'm the Helena Symphony's Director of Development and Communications and your host this evening. Tonight, we conclude our 2021-2022 season, live dangerously, and be tempted by one of the greatest female heroines ever, Carmen. Thank you to AARP Montana for sponsoring the naming rights to homestream your Helena Symphony. Thanks to the generosity of AARP, we have been able to live stream all Masterworks concerts of the last two seasons for free to thousands across the globe. Tonight's concert sponsor is Helena Home Team. We are so grateful for our friends at Helena Home Team for supporting symphonic music in our community. You do so much to support and preserve the unique and beautiful qualities of our city. Thank you also to our guest artist sponsors, DA Davidson and the Best Western Premier Great Northern Hotel for sponsoring the appearance of our fabulous Carmen soloists this evening. Finally, thank you to Helena Town Car Company for transporting our season 67 soloists. The Iron Horse Opera Chorus is thrilled to share the stage tonight with the Helena Symphony Orchestra and Chorale. The Iron Horse Youth Music offers a wide variety of programs for students and musicians of all ages. We invite you to learn more at ironhorsemusic.org. We hope you will join Iron Horse Youth Music as they inspire, educate, and connect people through music. Tonight is your last opportunity to make a donation to the Helena Symphony for a concert this season. Over the last two years, we have brought symphonic music into your homes in spite of and because of immense global challenges. Each donation, whether it be $5, $50, or $5,000, makes a meaningful impact in our community. This season, we've reached thousands across the globe, welcomed over 1,500 fourth and fifth grade students to the concert hall for our annual youth concert, welcomed back the unparalleled Symphony Under the Stars, and partnered with local businesses and individuals to bring symphonic music into your lives. We ask that you consider donating to ensure that performances like these can continue for years to come. You can donate on the Helena Symphony website by sending a check to the Helena Symphony office or simply take the sheet of paper you were handed as you entered the concert hall tonight and scan the Venmo QR code with your phone. Music matters and you make it possible. Tickets are on sale now and are selling fast for the Benefit Concert at Montana Ting on June 25th. Walk the red carpet in your best black tie attire, enjoy exquisite catered cuisine, and take in the stunning views of Helena from above Hauser Lake. And finally, experience one of Hollywood's, Hollywood's greatest film scores performed by the Helena Symphony Orchestra and Chorale. We only have 500 tickets to sell this year and they are going very quickly, so be sure to buy yours soon by calling the Symphony office or visiting our website. I would also like to take a moment to recognize our incredible Benefit Concert at Montana Ting sponsors. Thank you to Susie and Ray Koontz, Opportunity Bank, Rick Pfeiffer, Eaton Turner Jewelry, Gaynell Brook, Melanie Reynolds and Bob Rowe, the Peccia Family, Northwestern Energy, Peter Sullivan, Helena Motors, Morrison Law Firm, Deb Whitcomb Broker at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, and Payne West Insurance. If you want to join us as a sponsor for the 2022 Benefit Concert, just give our office a call at 406-442-1860. Thank you for joining us online and in person throughout Season 67. Now please, get ready to indulge in the exotic and dramatic story of Isaias Carmen in this semi-staged performance, starring tenor Eric Fennell as Don Jose, bass Ian Burns as Escamillo, soprano Leah Partridge as Michaela, and mezzo-soprano Kristen Chavez as the title role Carmen. 
I am pleased to present the musicians of the Helena Symphony Orchestra and Chorale, the Iron Horse Consortium for Young Musicians, and finally, Maestro Alan R. Scott. Enjoy the show.
je ne fie charmante, Pia vient de me demander si tu n'étais pas là. Je peux plus et non te tombante. C'est doit être Michaela. Ce pas dans ce grand bâtiment que travaillent les cigarières. C'est là, mon officier, eh bien certainement, on a vu les parfums aussi légères. Mais au moins sont-elles jolies. Mon officier, je n'en sais rien, et moi qui passe peu de ces galanteries. Ce qui t'occupe, ami, je le sais bien. Une jeune fille charmante, on appelle Michaela. <rire> je peux plus et notre tombante. Tu ne réponds rien à cela. J'aurais pas qu'à sa vraie. J'aurais pas qu'à je l'aime. Quant aux ouvrières d'ici, quant à leur beauté, les voici. Et vous pouvez juger vous-même.
Quel regard, quel effronterie! Cette fleur-là m'a fait l'effet d'une balle qui m'arrivait. Le parfum est fort et la fleur est jolie. Et la femme, s'il est vraiment des sorcières, s'en est une certainement. Michaela, quelle joie! Parle-moi de ma mère. Parle-moi de ma mère. Une lettre
Sifler, sorcerer of fama. Il d'abord et puis à la fin des coups, une femme blessée. Et par qui Mais par elle. Vous entendez Que nous répondrez-vous de tes chansons, et puisque l'on t'en dit de répondre, réponds. Que tu les prends, c'est certain. Si chanter en ton air au milieu de la prison. La peste, 
Décidément, vous avez la malice. Tra. Dommage, c'est grand dommage, car elle est gentille vraiment. Mais il faut bien rendre sage, attacher ces deux jolies bras. Prison, et je n'y puis rien faire. Vraiment, tu ne peux rien faire. Non, rien. J'obéis à mes chefs. Eh bien, moi, je sais bien qu'en dépit de tes chiffres, mais tu feras tout ce que je veux. Et cela parce que tu m'aimes. Moi, t'aimes? Oui, José. La fleur dont je te vis présent, tu sais, la fleur de la sorcière. Tu peux la jeter maintenant, le charme vert. Ne me parle plus, dis-moi ne parle plus, je le défends. Je t'avais dit de ne pas me parler. Je ne te parle pas. Je chante pour moi-même. Je chante pour moi-même. Oui, je pense. Il n'est pas défendu de penser. Je pense à certains officiers. Je pense à certains officiers. Man, 
Je suis comme la mivre, si je cède, si je me livre, ta promesse, tu la tiendras, ah, si je t'aime, Carmen, Carmen, tu
Soldat l'autre jour, en prie son nez pour toi. T'as trouvé de ce malheur. Maintenant, il est libre. <rire> il est libre, tant mieux. Bonsoir, messieurs, nos amoureux. Bonsoir, messieurs, nos amoureux. Viva, viva le tonnerre. Viva, viva le tonnerre. Viva, viva le Viva, 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 viva,
Je 
souffre de mortir, car jamais, jamais femme, jamais femme avant toi. Non, non, jamais, jamais femme avant toi, aussi profonde et mon
vérité. Non, tu ne m'aimes pas. Non, car si tu m'aimais, là-bas, là-bas, tu me suivrais. Carmen. Partirai pas tout le monde. Il va pleuvoir des coups. Vous arrivez fort mal, 
Time to crack an egg. Easy, any style egg works. Here. Or smile. Well done. This looks great. Time to hey, share a story. Kind of a great way to start our discussion with old friends yeah, or new ones. When you're a caregiver. Time to breathe in. Inhale up. Good job. Then let it all out. Rah! It's never been easier to connect, learn, and have fun. Cheers. So let's do it together. Come find us at aarp.org/nearyou. Hi, I'm Mary Amon Hibbard. Hi, I'm Kelly Wirtz. Hi, I'm Tara Palmer. Hi, I'm Cameron Hahn. Hi, I'm Amber Conker. Hi, I'm Jared Ingle. We are Hell in a Home Team. Like many of you, I leave the symphony and feel inspired by what I've heard, by what I've seen, by what I've felt. That's why at Hell in a Home Team, a portion of every sale will go back towards these organizations. We have such a vibrant art community, and it doesn't happen on its own. It's because of the support of everyone here. Thank you for being here in person. Thank you for being on your computers. Thank you for being wherever you are in support of this wonderful, wonderful organization. At Hell in a Home Team, we are your local real estate company. Please come see us in the heart of downtown Helena on Last Chance Gulch.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Carmen in Concert intermission interview. I am joined by some of our fabulous soloists this evening and maestro Alan R. Scott. Thank you all so much for being here with us tonight. Um, can I have you guys just introduce yourselves to the audience and which character you play? Sorry, should we start with you, I guess? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm Nathan Stark, and I sing the role of Zunika and also the role of Morales. And I'm Leah Partridge, and I sing the role of Mikaela. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Great. Thanks for putting oh, that I, in there. I just <laughs> brought that in there. <laughs> Where are you from? Uh, I'm from San Jose, California. See, that's important. Sure. <laughs> I'm Eric Fennell. I sing the role of Don Jose, sometimes referred to as Don Jose. And I was born in Pennsylvania, but I live in Berlin, Germany. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for being here with us tonight. Um, so just to kick things off, Carmen is obviously one of the most popular operas that's performed today. Many people in our audience tonight may have seen Carmen before. Can you guys each talk about why you believe Carmen is so popular after all this time and why people love to watch it again and again? I could say I could take that one, I guess. <laughs> yeah. uh, believe it or not, uh, when Carmen first came out, it was a failure. Um, but it grew in popularity over, over the years. Uh, Bizet was very interested in Spanish music and these themes, and he wanted to, he, he wrote a lot of songs uh, that had s the sort of flavor that Carmen has, uh, but Carmen was his first opera that he incorporated these Spanish themes. And I think it's partly this music and also a great story uh, that he adapted from a novella by Prosper Merimé. And uh, yeah, now we just remember those tunes. I mean, everybody leaves this opera whistling the Toreador song, and there's great entract music, there's great orchestral music, and um, of course, Carmen's Habanera, everybody seems to know that from television commercials <laughs> and things like that. So I think that's what has sort of kept it alive. Um, Great story, has a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. a little bit of comedy, a lot of drama, <laughs> and uh, excellent music. Go, if you guys want to chime in, I, I, I have some thoughts, but I'm, I'm curious. What no, you I would just say that it's, it's, it's one of those operas, too, that is so accessible to audiences. Mm -hmm. And what I found is there's a couple of operas out there that are good first-time operas mm -hmm. for the non-opera goer. Uh, and that's all about the music and how accessible music is. I think some of the most uh, profound music and the most accessible music is the music that people can walk away humming. And mm -hmm. Carmen is mm -hmm. certainly uh, one of those uh, operas. And I also love that it has a children's chorus. I think that's a way mm -hmm. to get kids involved at a young age and being, you know, knowing opera. So it's, it's fun to see them be on stage and get involved in it. Yeah, it's totally exciting for us as well because not every opera, in fact, most don't have a children's yeah. chorus. So mm -hmm. it's, it's fun <laughs> for us too to see them up there. What I, and, I, and I agree with all this, but I, what I like particularly, because you know, the reason we call them soap operas on television, or what they call reality TV, which is, there's nothing real about it, of course, right? But the reason why audiences gravitate towards us, it's escapist entertainment, right? Um, the original American musical theater was very much like this. This idea that you know, man walks in, sees woman, an act later, they fall in love, two acts later, she dies of consumption or he kills her. You know, I mean, this, <laughs> this, this very simple, very unrealistic plots. However, the reason why we're gravitated towards it, it deals with very real emotions, albeit in extreme. But the relationships that we encounter, we all connect to in one way or another, the emotions, whether it be jealousy or um, conflict or infatuation or seduction. Um, and each of the characters, I think Bizet was very calculated. And the, other, the tragedy of this whole thing, to me, is not Carmen's death. It's Bizet's death. Bizet dies after the 30th performance. Of, of Carmen. People believed it would never have seen 20 performances, so he never saw it really become popular, mm -hmm. but like you said. Um, not until it moved to Vienna um, right. did it become really popular. Even the French audiences weren't sure how to take this very courageous woman, uh, this character, this is 1875, this very courageous woman doing these things and even the sort of the amoral uh, themes that we see mm -hmm. throughout this free-loving gypsy woman. But what the thing that I'm intrigued by and in how Bizet writes it, he, 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 he panders to the audience a little bit. I mean, he, he did not like the Votretos, the Torador song <laughs> that we all love. In fact, he said, they want trash, I'll give them trash. And, and he, and he oh referred gosh. to the Torador tune as utter trash. And yet we all love it, right? And, but he, he panders to that a little bit. But he also, like, like you said, he was fascinated by this Spanish 
uh, sounds, but so many composers were. A lot of the Russian right. composers were. Rimsky Korsakov certainly was. Um, and this goes back a century before when people like Mozart and Beethoven were intrigued by Turkey and Morocco. Mm -hmm. In Beethoven's Nine, we hear cymbal and bass drum. That was a Turkish march. That was so almost blasphemous, taboo to have that mm -hmm. in a symphony of all things. And, and Mozart plays with this Turkish tunes a lot too. Um, a, almost a century later, composers, are, even though Spain was so close by, it was so taboo mm -hmm. and so exotic. Fast forward a century later, it would be like, almost like the Middle East became, right. you know, for early 20th century composers. Um, so there is often composers are trying to tap into a land far away. But what I love, and the reason I think that people love this, not just because of what they said, is how, how the three duets between Carmen and Jose really sort of give us the roadmap. You know, we get seduction, mm -hmm. conflict, and resolution, the resolution being her death. Right. Um, and as she becomes, in effect, more courageous and has to be completed with her death, I think, I believe that she knows it. She knows she's the bull. We, the bull fight is happening off stage, but, uh, uh, and we know that she's going to die the same moment that the bull mm -hmm. is being stabbed by, the, by her new lover, Escamillo. But I think as we see her becoming more courageous, we see the complete dis mental and emotional destruction of, of Jose. Right. So there's this whole thing going on. Um, and we notice that in the duets, they never really, they never vocally truly come together, ever. Right. I mean, it, they're moments, but it's, it's not like La Boheme. Mm -hmm. it, they never, the, the tenor and the soprano, as much as we want it, they, it's almost like they try to. And in fact, every time they come to interact, inevitably we hear this slow fake theme. Right. Her impending doom or his impending doom. And in many ways, I think as Michaela represents his past, mm -hmm. his mother, his home, Zuniga represents Carmen's past, and Escamillo represents Carmen's future. Um, there is all these sort of relationships that intermingle, that Bizet does this, all with the Wagnerian technique of leitmotif, mm -hmm. which we all know, the audience knows leitmotif, whether we know it's mm -hmm. called that. You hear Darth Vader, you hear even the idea of it, you hear ba 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 you hear right. the idea of Jaws, even though you don't see the shark, you hear da um. mm -hmm. John Williams is deliberately using Wagner's late motif. And the late motif is used throughout all of this. When we think of the Torador, we just hear a little bit of that theme. Sure. Um, Carmen's impending death is constantly being played throughout the opera. Mm -hmm. I believe, and, and, and Nate and I were talking about this off camera, I believe Zuniga is one, is one of the most important characters. He comes in and out of every scene. And I think there's a reason for it. I think he represents Carmen's past whether he's involved with Carmen or not is irrelevant. He represents Carmen's past, and he, I think, is the glue to much of it. Right. Just like Michaela, it represents Jose's past, mm -hmm. the innocence. Um, and so I think when we see, we, there's a lot of symbolism here that deals with human emotions that we all relate to. Yeah, definitely. Well, and so, you know, as vocalists, many of you have, will repeat roles. So, and I know, Eric, you've definitely sang Don Jose before. Can you talk to our audience a little bit about what it's like to reprise this specific role? Overall, it's always a great experience for me because um, the first time you do a role, you're very conscious about the music, you're very conscious about the words and the acting choices that you've made. But the second and third and fourth and fifth, or for me, I think this is my 12th production of Carmen, you get to experience uh, working with new colleagues. Mm -hmm. And that's, it always changes because each, co each colleague has their, their own ideas and you collaborate with them and it almost becomes a new, a new thing. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's like a new version of Carmen in this case. Uh, so uh, I, I really love it, I really love it. And, and obviously the maestros too, because they have, each maestro has their own ideas about tempos, about uh, interpretation, uh, about how to, uh, how to cut the opera, because the opera is very, very long, so you always have to do some strategic cuts um, I've been in productions where they move numbers around <laughs> so once in a while. It's not so common with Carmen, but it does happen mm -hmm. sometimes. Uh, so, yeah, but it, uh, the biggest thing is the colleagues, right. because especially with an opera like this, I have so much interaction with Carmen yeah. that when I have a new Carmen, everything changes uh, based on their body type, based on their, uh, their, their personality, their their stage personality and their ideas about how to play Carmen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I play to those ideas or I go against them and we collaborate together, you know. Also the physicality, um, you know, Kirsten is one of those uh, 
one of those uh, mezzo sopranos, one of those carmens, really likes to be grabbed. Mm -hmm. You know, she's always saying, you know, you can throw me around a little more. You know, <laughs> you can really grab me in this part. You can really bring me close. And uh, yeah, I mean, I really don't have an opinion one way or the other mm -hmm. if I just sort of make it look like I'm grabbing them hard, but not. Right. or actually grabbing them hard. Uh, so I really don't have an opinion on which way, but obviously you have to realize who your Carmen is mm -hmm. and how she likes to be grabbed or else. I, I wanted to ask yeah. Eric, because I think, I think- They don't um, like that so much. You say, because the conductors, I mean, to me too, I, this is, I think it's my 12th time I was trying to go Yeah, back. great. And so it's, but it's, this is different when we do it in this setting. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's become more of a semi-stage thing, which I, which I think is great. And that's mainly because Kirsten and I, when we talk it, she's a very physical, uh, actress. Mm -hmm. She demands to be, she needs to be, whether she's doing it on her own or interacting, she needs that physicality of movement to right. really come in. So we said, okay, we got to semi stage more of this. And it sort of taken a life of its own a little bit, um, as opposed to just a straight concert. But normally, if we were, if it was a full stage production with the orchestra in the pit, we would be, we'd probably be here for two or three weeks. Right. We don't have that. So we, they have to create instant connection mm -hmm. within a week. So that's why after our first read through Tuesday, we had two, two long rehearsals Tuesday, we just had a big dinner together. Mm -hmm. That wasn't just because we just wanted to have dinner together. Right. It's I look at that as important. That's our opportunity to just quickly form bonds. But what I really like was that Eric and Kirsten did Carmen's, we were figuring, 17 years ago. Yeah. And it's, it's the last time you guys Ar worked together. Arizona, right? yeah. Yeah. So is, that's fascinating too, because now you both have gone off and done many good. That's, mm -hmm. that, you know, and I didn't know that when I cast. Um, but I wanted to ask, I don't, I'm not of the opinion that we see Jose as a, as a lunat, as a raging lunatic. And I think sometimes people interpret it that way. Mm -hmm. I actually look at that as we, the audience are seeing this whole opera through his eyes, not hers. That's how I always approach it. Yeah. That we, she must die for him to be, have any redemption at all. She must die. I believe she predicts it. She knows it. It's going to happen. I believe it's essential. Um, uh, and it's very Shakespearean, I think. And mm -hmm. I think that we see it. And I don't think our goal is to see the opera through her eyes as much as through his. That's my own opinion. Mm -hmm. I've always yeah. seen that through his, that he becomes sympathetic and pathetic. Mm. He becomes a pathetic character and yet sympathetic at the same time. That's me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys yeah. might complain. I, it's one of the, <laughs> Don Jose is one of the most interesting roles that I sing because, uh, you know, Carmen's role is much, much bigger than Don Jose, but Carmen's dramatic Arc, arc, she really doesn't have one. Right. She's pretty much the same mindset at she the beginning she is. And, the, and the end. But Jose goes from this you know, sort of upstanding soldier uh, who's look, looking forward to going back to his hometown someday and marrying his, his uh, childhood sweetheart and things like that and goes to, ends up being a murderer. Mm -hmm. you know, goes uh, first a bandit and then, and then eventually a murderer. Right. So he's got this um, you know, very defined dramatic arc. So it's a yeah. lot of fun to play that. Very cool. Awesome. I, well, I, I, I'm, I know, and yeah. I'm curious about how what you guys think. If you, you guys might completely disagree with what we're saying, because you guys have done lots of Carmen's. Do you, I don't think I don't think Jose is a raging lunatic. That's me. I wouldn't call him a raging lunatic. Lunatic. I mean, I think that certainly by the the end of the opera, you've seen him. Uh, uh, lose some of his sanity. <laughs> He's changed. Yes, sure, he has right? definitely changed. But it is, you know, it's it's I. I loved your idea of, of we're seeing this through Jose's eyes. I've never thought of that before. And I think that's that's a part of uh, the collaborative process mm -hmm. that we were talking about earlier when you were talking about like working with with new artists and new conductors and new mm -hmm. stage directors. Mm -hmm. This is the this is one of the best things about the, the business is in this collaborative process mm -hmm. is you get a different perspective. You're like, "Oh, you mean you have these Oprah Winfrey aha moments." <laughs> I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. yeah. Well, and it, even even the habanera when she's She's seducing everybody else, but to get to him, we're all we're seeing it through. I still think we're seeing everything through his eyes, and mm -hmm. I, I very much look at this like Death of a Salesman. You know, mm -hmm. the, when mm -hmm. Willie Loman is just reduced to nothing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he has no choice. I really believe he has no choice. She has to die. Mm -hmm. Very oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. Well, and it leads into my final question, which is. Could each of you tell us what we should look out for in the second half of this opera? Obviously, we have the spoiler of what will happen at the end. Opera, there's no but, you're supposed to know the plot. But um, could eat, maybe it's just a little detail that you love about the second half of this opera. Maybe it's something really major that happens. What do you think the audience should be looking out for? Oh well, I'll speak for Michaela because you know I'm, I'm on stage so little, but. Um, at this, in the second half, it's where she really decides that she's going to 
confront both mm -hmm. Don Jose and stand up to Carmen in some way. She never really confronts her directly. I mean, they don't have a conversation, but... Um, and you have your aria. And I have my aria so that's <laughs> where I... definitely look forward to that. <laughs> where that small town girl comes and, and, and really tries to change things for Don Jose. It doesn't work out, obviously, but she, you know, confronts her own fears. And for yeah. me as a character, that's... It's a beautiful moment, you know, it's, mm -hmm. and it could change the whole, he could just uh, go home and that would be the end, but we know it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to have that, you know, shining bit of hope, yeah. that choice. A again, another courageous moment from the two female leads that we don't necessarily get from the male leads. I think that's Bizet's greatest mm -hmm. gift to the opera, that's my mm -hmm. the, the, the yeah. second courageous moment. The, the biggest courageous moments are both from the female leads in 1875, that's huge. I know, yeah. it is huge. From a musical standpoint, the the chorus that opens Act Four yeah. oh, could yeah. be a standalone piece by itself. Yeah. It's it's so exciting because you have the full chorus singing with the children's chorus, mm -hmm. and it's just this ragingly beautiful music. Testimony to Bizet's mm. composition mm. style mm -hmm. too, and his vocal writing. Mm -hmm. is, is and, and to me, yes, Bizet is always uh, trying to sound Spanish, mm -hmm. but inevitably, it's always an attempt. He's mm -hmm. more. His hero was Charles Gounod, even though in many ways he surpassed Gounod by milestone. I mean, he tried to imitate Gounod and everything from his early symphony at 16, or which we did at closing sure. night last year. His early symphony that he wrote at 16 years old is like almost completely copied from Gounod. He's trying to sound like Gounod so much and he toys with some Wagner, Wagnerian ideas mm -hmm. and he attempts to try to sound Spanish. Right. And, and he's successful somewhat, but ultimately oh, when he's at his best, particularly Michael Azari in the side, that is so yeah. bizarre. Yeah. Um, and so um, I think you're getting this incredible 36-year-old composer writing in ways that most of us could only wish. You know? So I think you're, 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 hearing, you're hearing a composer who is at the height of his powers. Yeah. Um, and and the real, like I said, I think the real tragedy is, is his death. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all so much for joining us for this wonderful interview. Thank you to everybody joining us from home and in the concert hall tonight. Please, if you would like, make a donation to the Helena Symphony tonight to support our music making this season and for many seasons to come. Thank you to our wonderful sponsors, to Helena Home Team, to DA Davidson, ARP Montana, Treasure State Internet and Telegraph. So many wonderful organizations and individuals make our music possible. Thank you so much and enjoy the second half of Carmen. Shopping for a vehicle shouldn't be stressful. At Helena Motors, you can enjoy a stress-free car shopping experience, simple auto financing, and the fastest service in town. We offer four brands under one roof, Ford, Lincoln, Honda, and Toyota. At Helena Motors, we promise you'll drive home happy with the best vehicle at the best price. That's the way it ought to be. Order your next vehicle at HelenaMotors.com today. Good evening. Welcome to the Helena Symphony concert tonight. My name is Mike Spreadbury with Helena Town Car Company. At Helena Town Car, also known as HEC Montana Limousine, we have something in common with the symphony. We have experience and we practice precision. We'd be glad to have a car waiting for you where you'd like it. For tonight's performance of Carmen, we have Nathan Stark, baritone, and we have Eric Fennell on tenor. As a reminder to the audience, Helena Town Car HTC Montana Limousine can help you anywhere in the nation or even anywhere in the world. Enjoy tonight's performance. The Iron Horse Consortium for Young Musicians exists to inspire, educate, and connect people through music. Our dedicated staff of local music instructors bring years of expertise to student ensembles, academic classes, and private lessons. This summer, we are excited to present Last Chance Lesson Camps and Last Chance Music Camp to young musicians of all skill levels. We invite you to visit ironhorsemusic.org to learn more about our organization, to enroll in activities, or to donate to our diverse programs. At Opportunity Bank, this is our 100th year of serving Montana. To celebrate, we're going to tell a hundred stories, share a hundred lessons, and give a hundred gifts. We're calling it the Big 100. It's a celebration of this community, the good people who live here, and the businesses we've helped build. Visit us at Opportunity100.com to join the celebration. Here's to the next hundred years.
votre nom, répondez. Ici, Escamillo, pour les lots de Granade. Escamillo, c'est moi, je connais votre nom. Soyez la bienvenue, mais vraiment, camarade, vous pouvez y rester. Je ne vous dis pas non. Mais je suis appelé mon cher à la folie Et celui-là, c'est un pauvre compagnon Qui pour voir ses amis risquerait sa vie Seul que vous aimez est ici C'est moi, c'est une zingara mon cher Elle s'appelle... Carmen, 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 oui, mon cher. Elle avait pour amant, elle avait pour amant un soleil qui jadis s'a déserté pour elle. Carmen, il s'adorait, mais c'est fini. Je crois les amours de Carmen ne diront pas si moi. Oui, 
Regarde à toi, Carmen, je suis là de souffrir. Ta 
tat, je
Kaiser von Drei.
m'attend et je vais lui parler. Pardon, crois-moi, Rogard, je ne crains rien. Rogard, Don't 
talk, please.